If you've played Journey, Inside, or Fumito Ueda's Eco or The Last Guardian, you'll know what you're getting into with Vane. It's an adventure game developed by New Japan-based studio Friend and Foe. There's a great emphasis on environmental puzzles, no UI to speak of, no combat, and it leans heavily on its stance as a work of art. Does it manage to meet the high quality of its contemporaries? It certainly does when it comes to the narrative, which is mysterious yet intriguing and unlike anything I've seen in any form of media before. At points, it manages to be both unnerving and beautiful at the same time. There isn't much I can reveal due to spoilers. All I'll say is that you play as a bird who can transform into a child, in a world that is seemingly empty at first but reveals more of its secrets as you progress through your journey. There isn't any tangible dialogue and it's amazing what Vane can tell by saying so very little. The main character's transforming powers are the crux of the gameplay. You can only transform at specific infrequent stations and have to change often to solve puzzles. This works well in the game's enclosed areas, but less so in the couple of open areas. With the lack of waypoints, the player is forced to rely on the world design to guide them to their objective. Occasionally, well-placed cues will guide the player on the correct path in a satisfying and non-intrusive way, but a majority of the time, that is not the case. For example, there is a section in which the player must push a large ball across an expanse of land, but it was so overly designed that it felt impossible to pinpoint exactly where I was supposed to be going. Vane's most egregious flaw is its bugs, which cannot be overstated. It's an absolute infestation. A few visual or oral glitches would be forgivable, but that is the least of the game's problems. There were times when my character would disappear, times when vital NPCs would become unresponsive, and at one point the game warped me into a constant state of out of bounds. Dying isn't possible in vain, so there really isn't any need to reload a checkpoint. However, I had to reload one checkpoint six or seven times because the game glitched out so severely that I couldn't progress. And these checkpoints are about 30 minutes apart, which forced me to replay puzzles I'd already solved over and over again. A game that can be completed in about two hours probably took me three times that due to how unstable it is. The technical issues actively dampen the impact of emotional scenes. During moments where I was supposed to feel wonder, sadness or joy, I just felt anger. The whole time, it wasn't a matter of if the game would glitch out again, but a matter of when. The clumsy, imprecise controls don't help its case either. It's so unfortunate, as the game has some areas in which it excels, such as the scrappy yet effective visuals and the evocative and well-executed synth soundtrack. But the myriad of technical issues makes the whole experience feel like a slog and a chore. Vane is a game with so many bright ideas that were so woefully squandered. If it had a bit more time in the oven, Vane could have been something great. Instead, it's a massive disappointment that I cannot recommend.